Let's pray for your brain, my brain, our brains. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your patience, Lord God. Uh, I know all of us have uh, personal changes that we've seen, things that we would like to see. And I pray after today we have a greater confidence in our partnership with you that it matters to you what matters to us, Lord God. So much that even though you hold you own the entire planet, you still prefer that if we would want to pay a thousand bucks. Even if we can, we don't have to. Thank you, Lord God, that we learn from these opportunities, Lord God, that just because somebody says doesn't mean what you say doesn't matter anymore. It matters more when what we believe is challenged by the world around us, Lord God, to stand on our faith, to believe what you said more than anybody else in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you to everybody who made it possible. We had an electrician go out there and work um, on our electrical thing yesterday. Uh, give a hand to Cody if you guys would. Praise the Lord. And all the guys that came over to help moving stuff. Al and Errol and Jordan. I've had midnight moves before. I don't want to do them anymore. <laughs> Amen. Go to the book of numbers if you would. Praise the Lord. Thank you everybody. Praise the Lord. Mm. <laughs> I mean Tom said that yesterday. He goes, oh the kids are way over there. <laughs> and somebody said hallelujah. Party animals, man. Numbers, it's um 23, book of Numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Praise the Lord. In religious terms, <clears throat> when you talk about um, when, uh, like the concepts of the Bible, God, we all have an opinion. And when I say, when I refer to religion or religious tradition or traditional religion, I'm referring to the stuff that we believe that doesn't work. It's just something that we believe. Um, with regard to the Bible, church, God, our relationship with God, we believe it. Stuff like, you never know God's will. I'm a sinner saved by grace. It's all in God's timing, that kind of thing. And if you don't have the answers, we just relegate it to it's God's responsibility. And I wanted you to see something. If you can see this statement that you're about to read, <clears throat> that God himself is telling you. And we'll use that as the basis to move on because when people don't cooperate with you and you're trying to accomplish something, especially like just say it's SCE, it's an operator on the other end. What most people don't understand is um, it took me a long time to get it too because when things didn't work out for me, I just got mad at God. <laughs> Blamed him, blamed her, blamed them, blamed everybody. But I recognize now, having grown up a little bit, that <clears throat> since the life that we live today is the product of the life that we lived yesterday, what we live today came from what we lived yesterday. Anytime you have an opportunity to do something for God today, he is setting you up for a better tomorrow. Everybody understand that? It's not a matter of requiring us to get out of bed early, requiring us to live a certain lifestyle, but providing for us a way to get better tomorrow, better next week, better next year, so on and so forth. Because whatever we do today, we will reap the consequences or the results tomorrow. That's just the way it is. It's an inescapable truth. It's inescapable truth. Without any training, you throw a seed in the dirt and what will it do? Exactly what it was designed to do, grow. That's it. So <clears throat> our words, our actions, our beliefs become the seeds today that we plant for a better tomorrow. So the way I understand it, um, at least according to the Bible, some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. God is the Lord of the harvest, if, you, if I can put it in those terms. So... <clears throat> When you're trying to accomplish something in your life, and let's say you're trying to get the electricity on, she calls SCE, and a particular operator calls. Second operator calls, same, pro same issue. Third operator calls. What makes the difference between the third one that cooperated 
and the first and the second one they did not. And if God knows these people are going to answer and say no, why let them answer? Right? Is it possible that this is the ground that that first lady needed help and had no clue that if she favored us, something in her life could have gotten better. God gave her a chance, she blew it. God gave the next lady a chance, she blew it. Then the next guy comes on, yeah. Why does he cooperate if he's looking at the same account, same, same notes? Why? Think about it. So when you and I have an opportunity to do something for Jesus, if I can put it, don't look at us as an inconvenience. Look at us. This is a chance for me. Watch. Do you know what's coming tomorrow? We have certain expectations, but you never know. Next week, we, we had no idea COVID was going to lock down the entire country for a year, two years. When these people had their gyms open and they were doing well, COVID shuts them down and their businesses closed. How many restaurants just gave up? Lifelong investment, gone. Because the government edict said, you're no more, we're going to shut you down, done. In my mind, how many opportunities these, all these businesses have to sow a seed so that they would survive and then flourish coming out of it? Folks, <clears throat> God never provides for us so much opportunity and then doesn't give us a chance to sow to benefit from those opportunities. We have no idea what's coming tomorrow. We have no idea what challenges, what hardships, what difficulties we will face tomorrow. But we've lived long enough on this planet to know that there are things that hurt us, that damage our progression that will minimize our hopes and dreams that we don't get anywhere because of something that we've done, something that we didn't do, whatever the case may be. But if we know it works since yesterday, we know it can work for tomorrow. Sow the right seeds today to guarantee that your tomorrow is exactly what you want to live, exactly what you want. Appreciate the people that are around you. Show that appreciation. Demonstrate your appreciation. Love, mercy, grace, forgive. You're going to need it, folks. We've all been in a place where we needed a break. We just had no idea how we got here. But let's sow the seed so when we get there, we know we guaranteed that break. When we give somebody else a break. Amen. Okay, in Numbers chapter 23. A little bit of counseling, I suppose. Praise the Lord. Take, the, take a look at this. Numbers chapter 23. Let this be one of those things that helps you we're going to translate from, um, how do I say this? Faith, when you hear faith, faith in God. It sounds more religious, but I want to put it into more of a trust. If you and I decided we were going to go into business together, you're supposed to bring the truck and I was supposed to bring the tools. While I'm out shopping for tools, I'm trusting that you're bringing the truck. While you're out there shopping for the truck, you're trusting that I... And bringing the tools in, in every in religious terms, I have faith in you that you'll perform what you said and you have faith in me that I'll perform what I said, what I promised to do, what you promised to do. OK, that's our partnership in terms of God. It comes down to basic human trust. Our ability to trust didn't come from anywhere. God installed it because he's a trusting person. So if he made us in his image. And he's an honest person. He'll always do what he said. Then we should be the kind of people who just do what we say. Right? If you do what you say, watch, as a seed. What happens tomorrow when you don't get cooperation? There is that person who will do what they said for you. Even if the first operator said no, second operator said no, God knows somebody's on the other end of that line will say yes. Let's follow. So in the meantime... Your trust is getting rocked because the first lady said, nope. Second lady said, nope. Right. But God, didn't you say so on and so forth? Of course, he said, no, this verse that we're going to read, let it be a statement from God to you. But this is not a question that will ever rise again. Verse 19. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man 
that he would lie. Neither is he the son of man that right in the middle when you need him the most, he changed his mind. Hmm? Looking at it from a church perspective, <sighs> ministry, what did you tell God once that you would do, that you changed your mind on him so many times? What did God tell you that he's never changed his mind? See what I mean? At the very least, let's just do what we told him we'd do. At the very least. So God is not a man that he should lie, neither a son of man that he should repent. Has he said? Yeah. Shall he not do it? Of course. Has he spoken it? Shall he not make it good? That's the intention. So go to Isaiah chapter, uh, start at chapter 53, see how it goes. God doesn't, um, I don't want to say, that's chapter 55, forgive me. Isaiah 55. <clears throat> I won't say that's because God is saying, I'm God and I don't lie, but you're humans, you're going to lie because you're a bunch of liars. Don't look at it from that perspective. Um, hardships don't affect God like it affects us so that it adjusts the way we think. Follow? Like I'm going to do this, but then this circumstance happens and then I changed I change the terms, as it were, as a result of the circumstances. The circumstances don't change God's mind. They just don't affect them like it affects us. So recognizing that we have a par partner that will always do what he said, period. Then the hardships that we face are the, watch, the people who have an opportunity to sow into my life because my life is in line with God. Since we read in Genesis chapter 1 that everything he makes is... Very good. And I cooperate with the way he makes, the way he builds, the way he instructs, the way he does things. Then everything that I build is good. So I become that good ground that somebody who God opens the door for them who may be in trouble. But then they're here and I'm looking at myself as the victim. I never become that ground that helps them to sow into my life that improves the quality of their life as a result of coming into contact with me. You can't find scripture that says stuff like we are ambassadors for Christ representing him. Because from a religious perspective, what does that mean to your everyday Christian? I'm supposed to represent Christ. I'm a perfect little saint. You got the wrong perspective. The whole purpose of the blood of Jesus Christ, because you, we are not perfect little saints. We say stuff all day, every day. Just shouldn't have said it, but you say it. Do stuff, think stuff, act, so on and so forth. So the intention to represent Christ is not more religiously doing everything perfect as much as it is when somebody has an opportunity. Like, like we'll use me as an example. If I happen, if I have an opportunity to do good, will I use my measuring stick to do it or will I just do it because God said? But when if you did something crazy that you feel guilty about? Watch. So my guilt is stronger than what God said. You see what I mean? But we have our own opinions about how things should be done. Well, I just don't feel like I should be because it sounds like, remember, mind rolling emotions, worst decision to make is. So if I feel this way, then I make a decision. That's right off the bat, you're the wrong decision. So I, I, we're at Isaiah, right? <clears throat> Take a look at, uh, we'll start at verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. So, the natural for me, because I'm one of those people, I will naturally ask the question, well, when do I know God is near? According to Jesus Christ, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Okay. So based on what Jesus said, who is the son of God, who is, who does everything that he saw his father do, who only says what he heard his father say, that means God is always here, period. Everybody got it? He's never absent. We're absent sometimes, but he's not absent, all right? Verse 7, so when is God near? Come on, always. There's no, there's, <clears throat> it's, he's always here, right? They call it omnipresent everywhere all the time. Verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way, let the unrighteous man his thoughts, 
Let him return to God and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly. What does pardon mean? Let's say, for example, this guy's in prison. He's got a 25 year bid. He's going to do 20. He's been sentenced to 25 years. Somebody gets voted in that has the power to say the government or the governor or the uh, of that state that he's in prison in or the president. And they have the legal right to pardon this guy. Does it mean he didn't do the crime? It just it means the crime is irrelevant. You're out. Get it? So when God looks at us to pardon us, it's not because we crossed every T and dotted every I, said everything perfectly, and we're the perfect little saint, but because he, in his wisdom, has decided, I pardon you. Why? Because he needs me to do something rather than not do something. You guys get that? Believing is one thing. Doing what you believe, that's completely different. It's way more effective to do what I believe rather than just thinking about it for a while. Verse 8 says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Go back to verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. So the wicked simply means, it doesn't mean the evil, crazy person. It doesn't mean you got a twisted idea about what, what you think you're doing. Wicked, uh, from the word wick to twist. Forsake his way, the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and God will have mercy on this person who comes back to God. Because <clears throat> that's what returning means, duh. And to our God for... <clears throat> He will abundantly return to our God, for he, for God will abundantly pardon him. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. It's not human thoughts. It's the wicked person's thoughts. Right? The unrighteous guy's thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Why? Here's the distinction. As the rain, uh, the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not there until but waters the earth, makes it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, what I said. It will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. <clears throat> I, don't, I, I don't know if it'll... How do I say? You ever heard the term willpower? And it goes for a while. It's like, ah, then you give up. There's um, God's will is exactly opposite of what we assume or think. If I start a diet, then I go by and I get a nose hit of a restaurant or something, right? I shouldn't eat it, but I ah, forget it. What the heck? Especially if we're in a drive through and everybody's ordering yeah, what the heck? You just blow it, right? Your willpower just breaks, right? His doesn't. <clears throat> what do we do as far as the humans are concerned? Forgive me for the mechanics, but that's just the way it's going. Um, from a mechanical perspective, your mind, your will, your emotions, how does your will determine what to do? First thing that happens is you think. What are you thinking? Those ideas. You, you get the ideas, right? In your mind, now your mind calculates the information, knowledge, the understanding, and then your mind passes it to the will department. The will is what the choice. And then the emotions are supposed to follow. You laugh at the joke after, not before, right? So you get happy because it was a right decision, but the decision was made on based on what you thought. And but what you're thinking is what you, is the information that you're getting. Get it? So it's why it's vital, be careful what you hear. Because it may infect your faith, your trust in God. Well, if that was the case, then how come this happened? Then how come this happened? You're not asking for, a lot of people when they ask that question, they're not asking um, to get an answer. They're asking to challenge God's will. All right, so I want you to see something um, in the scripture and then compare it to where you are in life every day. Okay? <clears throat> Before we go there, consider this, what these verses are saying. Starting off at man is not a, God is not a man that he should lie, nor that a son of a man that would repent. And what he means about repent is go the other way from the decision that he already made. In other words, change his mind. So from our perspective, what changes our mind? Well, okay, let's say we've already graduated out of the emotional decisions. Circumstances. Our number one issue will always be 
circumstances. Circumstances do include information. I believe something, something else happens. Now I'm challenged whether I believe it or not. Because remember, your ability to believe is forced. It is, it is plugged into your will. If you've chosen, if you make that decision and some, something else challenges that decision, will your will break? Will it break that easy? You follow? If that's what you decided, what's making you waver so much? Well, you're strong one day, then you give up the next day, and then you're strong another day, and you're like up and down, in and out, so on and so forth. Why is it that you're having, you're struggling so much, <clears throat> just pressing forward no matter what, no matter who, no matter how? And in the case of somebody not cooperating with God's will, giving them a chance to sow into your life, to give them a break. You have no idea if the operator on the other end, on the other end is on the verge of a divorce. Has no, you have no idea. Somebody is about to die and God gave, sent them you for them to do you good, to get their seed into the good ground that will produce God's will in their life, which is good. Somebody gets healed. Somebody gets a life change. Somebody moves forward in life. Representing Jesus Christ is not being the best Christian. Period. To keep it simple, just the best person you can be. Based on what you already know, that's it. We have good days, we have bad days as humans. But one person that never changes is God. As long as your partnership with God is good to go, his, I, this is how I believe it. His goodness will leak over you so much that you just feel, you know what, I should just stop doing that. Nobody's sticking a finger in your face. It's just you trust that he knows what he's talking about because everything he touches works. So if I work it the way he works, I get the Midas touch too. You guys follow? From a religious perspective, you better stop sinning or else. Or else what? God's going to get you? Don't you think God should have got a lot of people already? I can't be the worst guy in the world. I mean, the best, but I can't be the worst. How come somebody didn't got that guy? Or that girl or those people that are doing crazy, right? All right, so in this scripture, we find God doing what? He sends out his word different from a twisted idea. From an unrighteous idea. So let's say you have the unrighteous mind, the wicked man, forsake his thoughts. Unrighteous man, give up the way he's thinking and come to me because I'm my thoughts are not like that. My thoughts are, my ideas are, my words are, when I say it, that's what I mean, period. Okay? So <clears throat> what affects the human being's will? I decide this, circumstances. Do they affect God the way they affect the human? That's why the distinction in numbers. I'm not a man that I'm affected like you guys and then I change my mind because now it's hard. I mean, if we haven't learned how to fight through hardships by now, holy smokes, I feel bad for you. Well, just keep coming in, we'll fix you up. Praise the Lord, amen. Right? All right, go to a um, very familiar passage. Let's just keep reading um, Isaiah 55 and then we'll change it, all right? In, in, this is Isaiah 55, verse 10. For as the rain comes down and, turn, and the snow from heaven and doesn't return there, but waters the earth first, makes the earth bring forth and bud. What does earth translate to for us at CC Live? My physical life brings forth, makes it bring forth and bud, produce, that it gives seed to the sower and bread all from his word. So it gives the start and the end. It gives the beginning and it finishes what it started, if I can put it in those terms. All right? <clears throat> verse 12. Oh, forgive me. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, won't return unto me void without a profit, without increase, without change, without results. But it will accomplish what I please, my will, and it will prosper for the purpose I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn will come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Results, good, great, awesome results has to be the evidence that God is working in your life. 
because what he compares here is the, um, instead of the stuff that doesn't help, new stuff comes up that does help. That's what's provided as a result of my word not coming back to me without his product. So whatever it is in, in life, because that's how I take this, the, the entire, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. <clears throat> familiar because we go there often because I need at least I feel like God is constantly reminding us. The smell of new carpet is kind of neat, huh? <laughs> I'm surprised how soft it is actually. I thought it would be hard or, or, but it, it's all good. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I got this counseling thing on me right now. But I have this thing that's pressing, and I think it's my compassion as opposed to what God told me, yeah, I need you to do this. I feel for you, my brothers and my sisters, because um, the hardships as humans that we go through more often than not are 100 percent we know it's our decisions um i've been to that place where condemnation keeps me from doing what i'm supposed to do because my opinion of the dirt is different from god's i mess up we've read it a thousand times that when we ask for forgiveness god is faithful and just to forgive us and to because a man of action is what he needs, not a man of just thinking about how bad it feels, right? You and I can do a whole lot better with people who cooperate with the mission than people who are still thinking about it. And it's not a, it's not a negative against the human condition. It's just to point it out that you'll be a lot happier to do what you told God you would do than you wouldn't, I'll put it that way. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28. It'll come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. You don't have to worry about the diligence, the diligently in this, the diligence in this ministry, because the diligence is some of the detail that we get into. <clears throat> and I explain it to such a degree that pretty much anybody can get it. If you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do everything that he commands, which I command you to this day. What's that mean this day? Up to, the, uh, up to this point, what do you know, right? So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, that's where we're at. Which I command you this day that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations, we'll call it nationalities, not because God is some kind of racist individual. But let's just consider us, instead of um, just humans, we'll call people who believe God. How's that? All the blessings, all these blessings, verse 2, will come on you and they'll overtake you. What's overtake you mean? Let's do this today. Set your mind on those particular words, understanding this foundation, that God is not a man that he should lie, that he changes his mind because it's a bad economy. Bad economy, would, would that qualify for circumstances? So it doesn't affect him. His economy is not affected by our economy, human economy. Right decisions from the government, horrible decisions from the government, right decisions from mom, brother, sister, dad, relatives, friends, company, corporation. None of that is relevant when I trust in this person who is not affected by circumstances. All right. So in his mind, the way I'm going to bless you is too much. You decide what's too much. Is a thousand bucks too much an hour? For some people, uh, yeah, but I'll take it. Right? <clears throat> For some people, it's like I got a lot, I got a big mission. That's not enough. Right? So let's say we um, I'm just using this as an example. Let's say what was the mission of this ministry? Let's say get on the TV. Let's say the TV costs ten thousand a month. And you guys are maxed out on your tithes and your offerings. To you, it's like, wow, this I'm giving a lot. But for the mission, it's not enough. 
You see what I mean? It's not because it's a, it's a, it's a dig against anybody's giving. It's just when you change the purpose that you're doing, it changes what you need. I can live off of 10 bucks an hour, but now I got a kid. You got the diaper thing, you got the milk thing, you got the formula thing, you got the doctor's visits thing. Wow, now I can't just walk from point A to B. It's sometimes the appointments are due at a certain time. It's more, more profitable for me. It's more proficient for me to get a car. Okay, so that 10 bucks all of a sudden is not enough. What changes the enough, not enough to too much or not enough? What well, changes the difference? What makes the difference? Okay, those are the limits, but watch. <clears throat> if I was good with 10 bucks, me, myself, and I, I'm done. But now I have a kid. 10 bucks is not enough. Why? Because the purpose now is changed. I'm not living for myself anymore. Now I've got to support this child. Now I need a car. Each time a purpose is added to me, as God increases me, the income level requires to grow. That's why it's always too much. He's thinking, Thomas, you're going to need this. I'm thinking, I don't need that. Trust me, son, you're going to need this. Follow? Poverty or lack in sufficiency mindedness is exact, like, exactly anti-Christ that way. Because God wants to increase us, not just so we can go, yay! I have a $350 shirt. I don't have a $350 shirt. <clears throat> in my mind, I, that doesn't make sense to me. Power tool for 350 yeah, that makes sense to me, right? But my need does not have a need for that kind of a shirt. I just don't at the moment. So, <clears throat> as you and I expand, income requires to, you guys follow? So, as God is blessing me exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think, he's blessing me for the future today. How? The seed that I sow today is different, right? So that it sets me up for tomorrow. I remember as my business way back when, when my wife and I, we were a, a general contractor. And um, a TM, my initials, TMT Productions. Um, I remember as the tide, as the business started growing and the tide started growing, I remember thinking, this is kind of crazy. I could not imagine writing a check or um, giving cash, whatever the tithe was, in, in the thousands. It didn't make any sense to me, or whatever the pastor said, and then boom, boom, boom. But it started dawning on me, he said, wait a minute, is the business growing because of this? I'm like, duh, right? Finally get the hang of it. And then every now and then I'd run into uh, a minister who actually preached heavily on seed. Seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. And it convinced me. And I started guaranteeing my today's today, yesterday, and today I'm guaranteeing my tomorrow by my today. Watch. If you give today what you can afford, what are you sowing seeds for? How do we stay just so we can afford year after year after year after year after year? Exactly like that. Because we can afford, watch, based on our circumstances. Not based on what we want in the future. Amen. Folks, that little milk and formula that you feed a little child in technical terms or the seeds that help them. It's the weirdest thing. You just feed in water. them, I mean, they just. Right. Notice how formula turns into something else. Right. All of a sudden they got teeth. They need a hamburger now. Before you know it, now they need a steak. How come as we grow, the needs require different supply? Those little tiny $2 shoes are not going to work anymore. Yeah, after a while, they need Nikes. <laughs> they need brand name stuff, right? It's, folks, the same thing for our cars, same thing for our clothes, same thing for everything. As we grow and develop, there's a supply that God had already invented that provides for us already. But you have to be encouraged enough to move when he encourages you to move. God is not trying to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you. So Deuteronomy chapter 28. All these blessings come upon you and overtake you. How do we guarantee they overtake us? 
doing, doing today, knowing that tomorrow will overtake us beyond what we can afford. Right? I'm not saying, no, I'm, folks, this is not a money, getting your money. You can keep it. That's not a big deal. But I need you to get the concept. You can't complain tomorrow that you can't afford when you today could not make the change for tomorrow. Follow? You guys ever heard of investment? How come a guy will take a piece out of his, let's say it's, it's a company uh, sponsored investment. We will match your 401k, right? It's an investment thing that the company says, you put in a thousand, we'll put in a thousand. You put in a hundred, we'll put in a hundred, that kind of thing. What's the point of the, why do you do without that money in your check today? Because you know you want a better tomorrow. You don't want to keep doing this when you're 70 years old. Right. You want something to, you have. You want something that you built up over the time so that now you don't work at all and you still get your bills paid. You can still take your vacations. You still drive in the river in your boat. Ocean in my case. But yeah, you know, whatever it is that you enjoy, you're setting up for it tomorrow by setting up for it today. Right. By work, working on it today. All these blessings will come and overtake you if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. You shall be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your... Does a blessed shall you be the fruit of your body include children that are completely 100% health? Because that's a tough one for Christians who have read that and they have challenged kids. It's rough. It's rough when we see stuff like giving, it should be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaking, all this abundance and people still experience lack. But if God made me like him and he's not flexed by the circumstances, we cannot flex regardless of the circumstances. You guys follow? Because I've already chosen to believe God no matter what. So no matter what comes, I still believe God. That's my will extending to the point where it forces beyond the darkness, forces beyond the challenges, forces beyond the hardships and the difficulties. Would you agree that you have experienced some bad times in your life? Would you agree that you've come out of them? So what for the next time? You'll come out of that just like you came out of everything else. Watch. How'd you come out? Here's a simple thing. You just kept going. Think about it. You didn't off yourself. I know this broke my heart, but whew. go to bed, get up, go to, go to work, go to bed, get up, go to work. Four weeks later, Forget about it. A month later, forget about it. It's another challenge now. And then you go through it the same thing and you just keep going. And because you have decided to keep going, that force of your will gets you past. So how do you guarantee to, to lose? That's it. The number one way that a human being loses is when they quit, period. That's it. There's no other way. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. This is talking about stuff. Blessed shall be your basket in your store. Blessed shall be you. You shall be blessed when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies that rise against you to be smitten before your face. Does that say, is it saying to you that you win every battle? Look. The Lord will cause your enemies that rise up against you. This is, would that include any enemy? Should be smitten before your face. They will come out against you one way, flee before you in seven ways. Is that saying that you are guaranteed to win every battle? You see the sort of courage that you have to pull up just to say that? It's weird. And yet he doesn't think the way we think where, of course I win. I'm God. Let's make man in our image so that. Of course, he wins. He's made like us. The Lord will command a blessing on you in your storehouses, all that you set your hand to. Everything that my hand sets to. What's that mean? Everything I do works. I don't know about that. Well, he's not a man that he should lie. Oh, maybe I'm looking at, well, I did this and it didn't work. I did this. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Well, today is a brand new day. His mercies are renewed every single morning, right? You get a fresh start every day. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you a holy people to himself as he has sworn to you. 
If you will keep the, his command, keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, all the people of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and, and be respectful of you. That's what the, the notion is. The Lord will make you plenteous in, this is verse 11, the Lord will make you plenteous in stuff, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your cattle. Would that mean that good health? Does, I mean, in your mind, does it just, in the English words that I'm reading that you're hearing, does it include, would you in your heart and mind include good health? So let's say God is not a man that he should lie, and these are part of his promises, what he bought and paid for in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. So when your health gets challenged, do you accept it or do you fight it? I mean, think about it, right? Because we're sitting here, maybe we're feeling pretty good, and we're deciding in our minds, you know what? The answer to that question is we would fight it because the circumstances will appear. They'll show up, and they will challenge you. And then what you say today, I will fight it has to be just as strong that day when you get challenged. To practice that your will doesn't flex. Not because you're a hard-headed fool, don't want to listen to God, but, but your will doesn't flex once you realize this is what God says, that's what I believe, that's what I'm doing. You'll notice that abundance, supply, provision is in this scripture as part of God's promises as long as we stick to the plan that we know up to this point. And you'll notice there's no lack in it. We're going to read a little bit into the lack. And that's what we want to avoid, right? So let's take a look at verse 12. Well, forgive me, um, verse 11. And the Lord will make you plenteous in goods and the fruit of it. This is the Old Testament. And the fruit of your cattle and the fruit of your ground and the land which the Lord. Third John, verse 2. For those who are watching by um, YouTube and challenging the, the perspective. I was watching this... Uh, um, once in a while, I'll just see what Christians are doing in the world, and I'll jump on the YouTube and see what's up. This is 3 John, verse 2. And what I find a lot of, in terms of Christianity on there, a lot of people in their YouTube channels, they find ministers and they criticize what they're saying. And they take the Bible and they try to get technical. They get really um, anal, they just, uh, anal, anal, analytic and say, well, the word actually means this. And they should have said this, that, and the other. It's like... They have no idea they're the Pharisees of today. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're hiding in the little basement. And then they have all these degrees. Nobody knows who they are. And they're just typing up all their opinions and telling everybody this. They should have said this. They shouldn't have said that. The Bible actually says this and just constantly criticize and, and have the nerve to talk about the love of God. Watch. I'm going I'm to tell you what Jesus said. He said, you want to know how the world will know you guys? Christians that are different from everybody else. He said, this is how they'll know that you're following me. You love each other. Criticizing somebody all the time is not loving them, right? So it's, it's kind of a trip how everybody sort of just makes up stuff as they go. Anyways, forgive me, that was a total side thing. And verse 12, Lord will open you up to you his good treasure, the heaven to give rain upon your land in the season, to bless all the work in his season, to work all the Bless all the work in, of your hand, and you will lend to many nations, and you shall not borrow. You shall means in the future to get to the point where you have enough to help somebody else. And the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. What's that mean? And he 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 makes it a point. He says, "You shall be above only on top. You shall not be beneath." And it says it shall, which means yours, this is a goal that we're trying to reach, the top. I show up in the company, I'm at the bottom. The goal is to be at the top. Well, if that's the department, I'm going to be the best in that department. You guys are going to come for me, to me for answers. Not because I think I'm in all that. If I stick to the plan, I become the best wherever I'm at. If I stick to God's plan, I become the best. Not just the run of the mill, I become the best of whatever I'm at, wherever I'm at. Watch this little key in here, verse 12. The Lord will open you his good treasure, the heaven, to give rain to your land in his season to bless all the, what's the next four-letter word? Work. Work of your hand, which means we got to do something. Amen. Lord, will make you the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath, if that you hearken unto the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day to observe and to do them. 
And you shall not go aside from any of the words which I command you today to the right hand, to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But it will come to pass if you will hearken, not hearken. Uh oh, here's the other side to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you. God is not commanding the curses. This is just the result of these particular seeds, these particular actions, right? Let's say you are a Christian and you feel like God bless you all over the place, but then you just walked up to a total stranger and hit him in the face. What if that stranger hit you back? God, why'd you let this happen? That'd be a dumb question, right? You shouldn't have done it. So there are circumstances that occur as a direct result of your intervention, if I can put it in those terms. So a lot of people say, oh, God cursed you by making that guy hit you. No, you just got hit in the face because you, you hit him first. Get it? So not everything God is actively working on against you or working on your life. Not because he is, but he's always working for us. But this right here is a warning. Cursed shall be you in the city. You shall be cursed in the field. Well, forgive me, uh, read verse 15 all the way. It'll come to pass if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you. Just like the blessings, they'll overtake you. This is when nothing in my life is working. For a lot of folks that are like, I don't know what's going on. It must be the devil. If nothing in your life is working and God is for you, it's not supposed to be like that. Curse shall be in the city. Dang it. In the field. Oh. In the basket, basket what you use to, to carry to, to build. Like if you went out into the field, built, filled, up the filled up the basket with grapes, if you will. And in your store, this is where you bring them to store them. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of your land, the increase of your kind, flocks of your sheep. Cursed shall be when you come in, cursed shall you be when you go out. Just think of opposite of everything that we just read in the first 14 verses. It gets worse. It's, it's depressing when you read it. Because it goes for a long time. It talks about stuff like divorce. You shall, you'll betroth the wife and another man will lay with her. Getting cheated on. It talks about sicknesses that should be healed, but just, just don't go away. It talks about growing old and not being able to pay for your own life. Constant dependent on somebody else. Stuff that matters right now in 2022. So if you're looking in your life and you got a whole lot of curse and not very much blessing, you can't just blame it on the economy anymore. If you believe that God's word is coming from somebody who doesn't change his mind and that the circumstances. In other words, stop making excuses for a life where you're just existing and start sowing seed that actually matters. Right. When if the seed I'm sowing is the same old seed that I've ever sown then I'll get the same old results I've ever gotten. Follow? Folks, more power has been lent to your control to force your will onto your life than you realize. Saying something like that in Christendom is very controversial because people don't know God as much as a partner as a um, relationship than they do as a religion. They don't real, a lot of folks don't realize when God said, let us make man in our image, and we recognize God as almighty, all powerful. We recognize him as in control of his life, if you will, of the life around him. And then when he says, let's make a man just like us, and then goes on a long list of giving us dominion and power and control, you have to realize God gave so much power so much control, so much free will that he expects you to maximize the production of your life so you don't struggle through it. Why? Because if you're made in God's image, do you imagine him struggling? If you have a hard time wondering what's up, just simplify it like this. Make it super, super, super simple. Is God struggling? No. Then why am I struggling? Is God stressing? No. Then why am I stressing? So you go back to what he recommends. Do what I tell you. You're going to win. Right? Just do what I, I'm instructing you to do this, Thomas. Just do it so that you win. You win, you win, you win. Let's see if we can find it in Deuteronomy. I was at Deuteronomy and I changed it. Let's try 31 or 30. Let's see if somewhere. It was cool. My old Bible had all the notes and stuff. Hmm.
Let me see if I can find this 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 thing right here. <clears throat> we're going to go 29 Deuteronomy chapter 29 and Deuteronomy chapter 30 and we're going to compare them and it will be done okay you have so much control in your life it's and, and you, you have to understand it pleases God when you exercise your power when you exercise your force it's like watching your son I mean, if you can if you can relate to the concept, maybe your brother, a relative, a dad, or something, and he's on the football field playing, and he is just killing it. Maybe she's in the volleyball team. Or it's a girl, and she's just killing it. It doesn't make you go, "Oh man, I wish they wouldn't do so good." I feel so ashamed. You'd be like, "Yeah, that's my dad. That's my brother. That's my kid, man, killing it, right?" They don't want to award MVP to the one who does worst. <laughs> That'd be the MIP to be most invaluable player. <laughs> I don't want that award. <laughs> We're happy when our children do well, straight up. We're proud of them. We're glad for them. He's like, oh, thank goodness. Now they don't have to struggle, but I got to struggle through. But when they don't do well, you're just like, what in the world, man? Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret thing belongs to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us. Every time you and I are exposed to a new truth, a new revelation, a deeper level of the same truths, we become responsible to manage those truths. Watch. To us and to our children forever, so that we may do all the words of this law. All right? I'm going to translate do all these words, this law. Obey me. That's the traditional way. Do it so that you win the way he intended. That's the way that we apply it. And it's in no way disrespecting God in any way, shape, or form. Because obedience is cooperation. Right? But when you say obey, you're taking Old Testament sort of thing uh, or perspective as opposed to contract. Uh, we have an Old Testament, old contract, new contract. And according to Jesus, the new contract is better than the old contract. According to Paul and Jesus and all the holy angels, praise the Lord. I haven't met them all, but I heard. So <clears throat> if the New Testament or covenant is better than the old contract, then our the reason why our new, old, our new contract is better is that we don't perform the way we had to in the Old Testament. Where you screw up one thing, there was no mercy. You had to go find a perfect lamb, a perfect goat, and, and, and put all your sins on it and then send it to the priest. Right? And then every year you're supposed to make this trek from wherever you are to the temple city and then do all your sacrifices. So we don't have to do that. We can fall on our knees right now and say, Lord, forgive me. And boom, done. Let's move you on, man. We got that out of the way. Let's get you, let's, let's get you to move forward, right? The Old Testament or the old perception is like, why well, still feel guilty? We're not going by your feelings, brother. We're going by what God said. You're going to believe your feeling. You're going to believe God. Whew, that's a hard one. It's hard because you said it's hard. You're thinking it's hard. <clears throat> and what's the world call you? Hypocrite. I've seen you do that. So on and so forth. Yeah, apparently you don't get the way God does it. That's why you talk the way you talk. Anyway. So once you are, once the, Truth is revealed to you. You become responsible to that truth. You heard a lot this morning. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. This is a court sort of setting. And it's a, you have to take it as a legal decree. That anything that is in dominion in heaven, anything that's in dominion on earth, the governments, if you will, have collected into this run one room to deal with you. To handle the issue that you need handling, if you will. To deal with the human being, the human condition. I call to heaven and earth to record against you this day that I have set before you life and death. God has said, this is life, Thomas. This is death. Therefore, I'm telling you. What's the choice that God recommends? Choose life. That both you and your seed may live. That you may love the Lord your God. That you may ob obey his voice. Obedience is also cooperation. And that you may cleave to him. For he is your life and the length of your days. 
that he that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. In other words, by contract to give them. I promise a lot of things through people who believe through contract. So as long as you act like somebody who believes in the contract, the contract has to become more important than your feelings. You guys follow? This is not because your feelings are not important. But if my feelings lead my decision to follow or not to follow, you're making the wrong decision right off the bat. It's so, it's so obvious, right? <clears throat> Get mad at somebody, then all of a sudden they're not your friend anymore. You start making decisions, whether it's financial decisions, relationship decisions. We've all been there, folks. Got mad about something and we run our mouth off and we just ruin something. And it takes a while to come down from that. It takes a while to come down from that. And I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, personal advice, but it's built on the scripture. This week. Wow, there's so much. There's... All right, we'll start here. We'll start here. This will be a simple one step that you can do. All right. As you're sent out, when you go out and do whatever it is that you're doing in life, doing your thing, and you run into somebody in trouble. Consider this, you're the answer to their problem. Okay, watch. You can't think that if you're measuring all of your problems. As a Christian, you're sitting in this room, all your problems have been handled by Jesus Christ. So it's not no longer a problem unless you, in your mind, keep it as a problem. So let's say you stop keeping it as a problem is the same as you getting out of the way. And then allow God to work through you to save somebody from their trouble. I guarantee you, you allowing him to work through you to bless them, you cannot avoid being blessed because the blessing has to go through you. When it hurt my feelings, your feelings are no longer relevant. You're on a mission. You are a field operative, if you will, in the secret service of the kingdom of heaven. And he needs you as an agent to accommodate the mission of the kingdom, right? So when you show up, sometimes you're feeling you have to put aside to save that life, even if that life is being saved for a moment. What's also happening? When I come to that moment in my life in the future where it seems like I'm in a corner, I got nowhere to go. God will remember that seed you sowed so that when you need an out, somebody will come and get you out. Watch, even if you hurt their feelings already. Because you were willing to put aside yours, somebody would be willing to put aside theirs for your sake. It's not magic, but you can kind of see how you can accommodate, if you will, or control your future by the things you sow today. Amen. Bow your heads, you guys. Father, we thank you so very much, Lord. We've been talking about expansion, and psh, here we are in our new building this Sunday morning, Lord. It's just, uh, oh, wow, thank you. And it wasn't even, there's no challenge to it, Lord God. Challenges came up, but it just didn't feel them like, like it was way back when. And Lord, I give you the praise, I give you the honor, but I also have to give recognition to these, your precious people, Lord God. Because we know collectively it's everybody doing their part. Even if they're not moving a chair, they come in, they hear, and they apply the truths. It's lending to the mission of CC Live, Lord God. We thank you for your love and your kindness, Lord. Thank you for taking the time, always willing and so eager to show, to reveal, to put on us, Lord God, what is on you so easily, so quickly. Help us to make the distinction between our feelings and what you said and the willpower to set aside what we feel so we can cooperate with what you plan on doing, Lord. And when we see those people who need our help, even if they're mad and acting crazy, Lord God, we recognize we're the answer. We're not the victims of any circumstance that these folks have an opportunity to sow and that you're giving them that opportunity by sending us into their path so that they can get a break because we know we're going to need one in the future. And we thank you for always taking care of us, coming 
going now, then, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand. Stand to your feet if you would. Praise the Lord.